There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as our elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. All the cattle are standing like statues. All the cattle are standing like statues. They don't turn their heads as they see me ride by. But a little brown maverick is winking her eye. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling Everything's going my way Hi, Anna! Ah, scare me to <laughs> death! What are you doing around here? I'll come a-singing to you All the sounds of the earth are like music All the sounds of the earth are like music the breeze is so busy, it don't miss a tree. And an old weeping willow is laughing at me. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. What a beautiful day. If I wasn't an old woman, and if you wasn't so young and smart, Alecky, well, I'd marry you, and I'd get you to sit around at night and sing to me. Oh, no, you wouldn't either, because I wouldn't marry you, nor none of your kinfolk, if I could help you. <laughs> None of my kinfolk, huh? That's right, and you can tell them that. All of them, including that niece of yours, Miss Laurie Williams. Ann Eller, if you was to tell me where Laurie was at, well, where would you tell me she was at? Well, I wouldn't tell you at all. For as far as I can make out, Laurie ain't paying you no heed. So she don't take to me much, huh? Well, where'd you get such an uppity niece that wouldn't pay no heed to me? Who's the best bronc buster in this year's territory? You, I bet. And the best bulldogger in 17 counties, me? That's who. And looky here, I'm a handsome, ain't I? Pretty as a pitcher. Curly-headed, ain't I? <laughs> and bow-legged for being in the saddle for God knows how long, ain't I? Couldn't stop a pig in the road. <laughs> well, what else does she want than the damn she-mule? Well, I don't know. But I'm sure certain it ain't you. <laughs> Who are you taking to the box social tonight? Well, I ain't much thought about it. Bet you come over here to ask Lori. What if I did? You're asking me, too. I wear my fascinator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, I thought you was somebody. I got a beautiful feeling Everything's going my way Is this all that's come a-calling on already 10 o'clock of a Saturday morning? You knowed it was me before you opened the door. Oh, no such of a thing. You did, too. You heard my voice. You knowed it was me. I heard a voice talking and rumbling along with Aunt Eller. Uh -huh. And I heard someone a-singing. It's like a bullfrog in a pond. <laughs> oh, you know it was me, so you set up in there thinking something mean to say. I'm a good mind not to ask you to the box social. If you did ask me, I wouldn't go with you. Besides, how'd you take me? You ain't bought a new buggy with red wheels onto it, have you? Mm, no, I ain't. Can a spanking team with their bridles all jingling? No. You expect me to ride on behind old Dunn, I guess. <laughs> you better ask that old Cummins girl you've took such a shine to over across the river. If I was to ask you, there'd be a way to take you, Miss Laura Smarty. Oh, they would? When I take you out tonight with me, 
Honey, here's the way it's gonna be You will sit behind a team of snow white horses In the slickest gig you ever seen Lads! Chicks and ducks and geese better scurry When I take you out in the survey When I take you out in the survey With the fringe on top Watch that fringe and see how it flutters When I drive them high-stepping strutters Nosy pokes will peek through the shutters And their eyes will pop The wheels are yellow, the upholstery's brown The dashboard's genuine leather With eyes and glass curtains you can roll right down In case there's a change in the weather Two bright side lights winking and blinking Ain't no finer rig I'm a thinking You can keep your rig if you're thinking That I'd care to swap for that shiny little surrey With the fringe on the top What'd you say the fringe was made of silk? Oh, wouldn't have no other kind but silk Has it really got a team of snow white horses? One's like snow, the other's more like milk So you can tell them apart All the world will fly in a flurry When I take you out in the survey When I take you out in the survey With the fringe on top when we hit that road, hell for leather, cats and dogs will dance in the heather, birds and frogs will sing all together, and the toads will hop. The wind will whistle as we rattle along, the cows will moo in the clover, the river will ripple out a whispered song, and whisper it over and over. Don't you wish you'd go on forever? Don't you wish you'd go on forever? Don't you wish you'd go on forever and it never stop in that shiny little story with the fringe on the top? You sure feel like a queen setting up on that carriage. Only she talked so mean to me a while back, Aunt Ella. I'm a good man not to take her. I ain't said I was going. Well, I ain't asked you. Where'd you get such a rig at? I bet he's went and hired a rig over to Claremore thinking I'd go with him. Oh, Saul, you'd know about it. <laughs> Spent all his money hiring a rig. Now he's got nobody to ride in it. I have, too. <laughs> I did not hire it. I made the whole thing up right out of my head. What? Made it up? Oh, dashboard and all. Well, get out of the place, you. Hey, Miller, make him get himself <laughs> out of here telling me lies. Oh, now, making up a few purties in it. Look out now. <laughs> Making up a few purties ain't again no law that I know of. Don't you wish there was such a rig, though? Then you could go to the play party and do a hoedown till morning if you was of a mind to. Then when you was all wore out, I'd lift you up onto that surrey, jump up alongside you and just point the horses home. I can just picture the whole thing. I can see the stars getting blurry. When we ride back home in the Surrey, riding slowly home in the Surrey with the fringe on top. I can feel the day getting older, feel a sleepy head near my shoulder, nodding, drooping. Close to my shoulder till it falls, kerplop. The sun is swimming on the rim of a hill. The moon is taking a header. And just as I'm thinking all the earth is still, a lark will wake up in the matter. Hush, you bird. My baby's a sleepin', maybe got a dream worth a keepin'. Whoa, you teen, and just keep a creepin' at a slow flip flop. Don't you hurry with the surrey, with the fringe on the top.
Only there ain't no such rig. You just said you made the whole thing up. Well, I... Well, why'd you come around here with your stories and lies, get me all worked up that way Talking about the sun swimming on the hill and all like it was so? Well, who'd want to ride alongside you anyway? Why don't you just grab her and kiss her when she acts that way, Carly? She's just aching for you too, I bet. Oh, I won't even speak to him, let alone allow him to kiss me. The bragging, bow-legged, wished he had a sweetheart bum. <laughs> she likes you. <laughs> Quite a lot. <laughs> if she liked me anymore, she'd sick the dogs onto me. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't you get the wagon hitched up? What wagon? Oh, there's a crowd of folks coming down from Bushyhead for the box social. Yeah, Curly said maybe you'd loan us your big wagon to bring them up from the station. Well, of course I would, if he'd asked me. Uh, as an asshole. Well, I got to talk about lots of other things, uh, so not, yeah. go hitch the horses now if you say it's all right. And Ella, mm -hmm. look what we brung you. <laughs> <laughs> Did do any good in the sear open? Oh, I did pretty good. I won it! Oh, 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 oh. Nobody can sling a rope like I did, toy boy. Can't stay for a minute, Ann Eller. Gotta get over to Ada Annie's. Don't you remember her pa said if I was ever worth $50, I could have her? $50? Is that what they give you for prize money? That's what. Ooh, lands! If Annie's pa keeps his promise, we'll be dancing at your wedding. Woo! And if he don't keep his promise, I'll take her right out from under his nose. And I won't give him the present I brung for him, neither. Look at here, fellas, what I got for Ada Annie's paw. Uh, excuse us, Ann Eller. <laughs> what is that thing? You hold it up to your eye like this. Uh, then when you get a good look, you turn it around at the top, and the picture changes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be side-gated. Yeah! They call it the little one. Yeah. You got to see it. Silly goat. <gasps> the hussy. Ought to be ashamed of herself. You too. Yes, ma'am. How do you turn the thing to see the other picture? Well, it's up here at the... Oh, wait a minute, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. <gasps> I'm a good mind to tell Annie on you. Oh, please don't, Aunt Eller. She just wouldn't understand. No, tell him what you've been up to. <laughs> I bet you carried on plenty in Kansas City. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't exactly call it carrying on. But I sure did see some things I never see before. <laughs> I got to Kansas City on a Friday. Well, by Saturday, I learned a thing or two. Cause up to then, I didn't have an idea of what the modern world was coming to. I counted 20 gas buggies going by their cells almost every time I took a walk. And then I put my ear to a bell telephone And a strange woman started in to talk What next? Yeah, what? What next? Gather round Everything's up to date in Kansas City They've gone about as far as they could go They went and built a skyscraper seven stories high About as high as a building ought to grow Everything's like a dream in Kansas City well, it's better than the Magic Lantern Show. You can turn the radiator on whenever you want some heat. With every kind of comfort, every house is all complete. You can walk to privies in the rain and never wet your feet. They've gone about as far as they can go. Yes, sir. They've gone about as far as they can go. Everything's up to date in Kansas City. Oh, they've gone about as far as they could go. They got a big theater. They call the Burlicue. For 50 cents you could see a dandy show. Yes! One of the gals is fat and pink and pretty. It's round above as she was round below. I could swear that she was padded from her shoulder to her heel. But later in the second act, when she began to peel, well, she proved that everything she had was absolutely real. She went about as far as she could go. Yes, sir. She went about as far as she could go. Hold the two step. It's all they're dancing nowadays. The waltz is through. Catch on to it. One and two. One and two. Of course they don't do it alone. Come on, Anna. One and two. One and two. You got it, Anna. One and two. One and two. And that's about as 
far as I can go. Yes, sir, and that's about as far as he can go. It's called ragtime. Rag Seen a couple fellers on the street doing it. <laughs> Watch this. Listen, uh, I gotta know something. Who's the low filthy sneaker Lori's got a cap set for? Her? <laughs> you? Never mind, Dad. There must be plenty of men trying to spark her, and surely she leans towards one of them now, don't you? Well, there is that fine farmer, Jace Hutchins, just this side of Lone Ellum. Oh, and that old widder man over at Claremore makes out he's a doctor or a veterinary. Well, that's just what I thought. <laughs> Hello, Judd. Hello, yourself. And then, of course, there's someone near the home got her on his mind most of the time till he don't know a plow from a thrashing machine. Him? Yeah, Judd Fry. That bullet-colored growly man. Now, don't say nothing again. him. He's the best hard hand I ever had. Just about runs a farm by himself. Well, two women couldn't do it. You ought to know that. Will Lori take up with a man like that? I ain't said she took up with him. Well, he's around all the time, ain't he? He lives here. Out in the smokehouse? Changed my mind about cleaning the hen house today, leaving it till tomorrow. I gotta quit early because I'm driving Lori over to the party tonight. You're driving Lori? Ask her. Well, wouldn't that just make you bald? <laughs> Don't you forget, Aunt Ella, you and me's got a date tonight. And if you make up a nice box lunch, well, maybe I'll bid for it. How we going, Curly? In that rig you made up? I'll ride a straddle of them lights, a winking light lightning bugs. That there ain't no made-up rig, you hear? I hired it over to Claremore. Land, you did? Oh, sure did, and a purdy one, too. So when I come a-calling for you after supper, you make sure you got your beauty spots fastened on right proper so you won't lose them off, you hear? That's a right smart turnout. The wheels are yellow, the upholstery's brown, the dashboard's genuine leather. With eyes and glass curtains, you can roll right down in case there's a change in the weather. Look, I'll see you before tonight anyway on the way back from the station. 
Ain't no finer rig I'm a thinking that I'd care to swap For that shiny little surrey with the fringe on the top Curly, tell all the girls at Bushyhead to stop by here and freshen up It's a long way to Skidmore's That means we'll have a lot of company Better get your hamper packed. Ann Eller, don't go to Skidmore's with Curly tonight. If you do, I'll have to ride with Judd all alone. Well, that's the way you wanted it, ain't it? No. I did it because Curly was so fresh. But I'm afraid to tell Judd I won't go, Ann Eller. He'll do something terrible. He makes me shiver every time he gets close to me. Ever go down to that old smokehouse where he's at? Plenty times. Why? Did you see them pictures he's got tacked onto the walls? Yeah, I see them, but don't you pay them no mind. Some wrong inside of me, Ann Eller. I hook my door at night and fasten my windows again it. Again it. And the sound of his feet are walking up and down out there under that tree outside my room. Lori. Mornings, he comes to his breakfast and he looks at me out from under his eyebrows like something back in the brush somewhere. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Crazy youngin. Stop acting like a chicken with its head cut off. Hey, now, who you reckon that is just drove up? Why, it's that old peddler. One sold me that egg beater. He's got Ado Annie with him. Will Parker's Ado Annie. Oh, peddler, you know what he told me. Told me that egg beater would beat up eggs and wring out dish rags, turn ice cream freezer, and I don't know what all. <laughs> Hold your horses, peddler man. I want to talk to you. Hi, Ann Eller. Hi, yourself. <laughs> Hello, Lori. Hello. Will Parker's back from Kansas City. He's looking for you. Oh, Will Parker? I didn't count on him being back so soon. I can see that. Been riding a piece? The peddler man's gonna drive me to the box social. I got up sort of a tasty lunch. Hey, no, Annie, have you took up with that peddler man? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but you're promised to Will Parker, ain't you? <sighs> Not what you might say promised. I just told him maybe. Don't you like him no more? Oh, of course I do. There won't never be nobody like Will. Well, then what about this peddler man? Well, there won't never be nobody like him, neither. Well, which one do you like the best? Whatever one I'm with. Oh, you are a silly. Oh, now, Laurie, you know they didn't nobody pay me no mind up till this year. Count of I was scrawny and flat as a bean pole. Then I rounded up a little, and now the boys act different to me. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing wrong. I like it. I like it so much that when a fella talks purty, I get all shaky from horn to hoof. Don't you? I can't think of what you're talking about. Don't you kind of feel sorry for a feller when he looks like he wants to kiss you? Well, you can't go around kissing every man that asks you. Didn't anybody ever tell you that? Yeah, they told me. It ain't so much a question of not knowing what to do. I knowed what's right and wrong since I've been ten. I heard a lot of stories, and I reckon they are true. About how girls are put upon by men. I know I mustn't fall into the pit, but when I'm with the feller, I forget! <laughs> I'm just a girl who can't say no, I'm in a terrible fix. I always say, come on, let's go, just when I order say mix. When a person tries to kiss a girl, I know she ought to give a space a smack. But as soon as someone kisses me, I somehow sort of want to kiss them back. I'm just a fool when likes are low. I can't be prissy and quaint. I ain't the type that can faint. Oh, how can I be what I am? flirty and starts to talk purdy what you gonna do supposing that he says that your lips are like cherries or roses or berries what you gonna do supposing that he says that you're sweeter than cream and he's gotta have cream or die what you gonna do when he talks that away spitting his eye I'm just a girl who can't say no, can't seem to say it at all. I hate 
sweet to disappoint a bow when he is paying a call. For a while, I act refined and cool, a setting on the velveteen settee. And then I think of that old golden rule and do for him what he would do for me. I can't resist a Romeo in a sombrero and chaps. Ugh. Soon as I sit on their laps, something inside of me snaps. I can't say no. <laughs> Come on, impression. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm just a girl who can't say no. Kissing's my favorite food. With her, without the mistletoe, I'm in a holiday mood. Other girls are coy and hard to catch, but other girls ain't having any fun. Every time I lose a wrestling match, I have a funny feeling that I won. Though I can feel the undertow, I never make a complaint till it's too late. Change my mind back. But Will wants to marry you. Oh, so does Allie Hackham. <gasps> Did he ask you? Not directly. But how I know is, he said to me this morning when we was riding in his buggy that he wanted for me to drive like that with him till the end of the world. Well, if we drove as far as Katusi, that'd take the sun down, wouldn't it? Then we'd have to go somewheres and be all night together. And being all night together means he wants a wedding, don't it? Not to a peddler man, it don't. All right, all right. If the egg beater don't work, I give you something just as good. Just as good? Yeah. It's got to be a thousand million times better. Oh, my, oh, my, Miss Lowry. Jippity crickets, how high you have grown up. <laughs> the last time I come through here, you was tiny, like a shrimp with freckles. <laughs> Mwah. Now look at you, a great, big, beautiful lady. Quit biting me. If you ain't had no breakfast, get yourself a green apple. Now, Aunt Ella, will you just listen to I that girl? I ain't your Aunt Ella. Don't call me Aunt Ella, you little wart. I'm mad at you. <laughs> Don't you go and be mad at me. Ain't I said I'd give you a present? Hmm? Something to wear. Foot got things fur to wear. What habit? What is it? Real silk, made in Persia. Oh, what do I want with an old Persian garter? Oh, that's awful pretty, ain't Eller? With bows on to them and all? Well, I'll try them on. Hold out your foot. <laughs> Did you have any idea I was gonna let you slide that garter up my limb? <laughs> Grab on to my petticoats, Lori. Funny woman. Would be much worse if I tried to take your garters off. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that would make her stockings fall down, wouldn't it? <laughs> now, give me the other one. Which one? Ah, you want to buy this one to match. What do you mean, do I want to buy it? I can let you have it for uh, 50 cents, four bits. You want me to ram that egg beater down your windpipe? <laughs> all right, all right. Don't anybody want to buy something? How about you, Miss Laurie? Must be wanting something. A pretty young girl like you. Me? Of course I want something. Want a buckle made out of shiny silver to fasten onto my shoes. Want a dress with lace. Want perfume. Want to be pretty. Want to smell like a honeysuckle vine. Never a cake of soap. I want things I've heard of and never had before. 
A rubber tired buggy, a cut glass sugar bowl. One thing I can't tell you about. Not only things to look at and hold in your hands, things to happen to you. Things so nice if they ever did happen to you, why, your heart would quit beating, you'd fall down dead. I have just the thing for you. The elixir of Egypt. What's that? It's a special formula belong to Pharaoh's daughter. Smelling salts? Ah, but a special kind of smelling salts. Read what it says on the label. Take a deep breath and you see everything clear. Well, that's what Pharaoh's daughter used to do when she had a hard problem to decide, like what prince she ought to marry, or what dress to wear to a party, or whether she ought to cut off somebody's head. She would take a whiff of this. Fiddlesticks. I'll take a bottle of that, Mr. Peddler. It's precious stuff. How much? Two bits. Throwing away your money. Oh, it helps you decide what to do. Now then, don't you want me to show you some pretty doodads, hmm? With lace around the bottom and ribbons running in and out. Huh? You mean fancy drawers? All made in Paris. Well, I never wear that kind myself. <laughs> But I sure do like to look at them. For you. <laughs> They's all right if you ain't going no place. <laughs> Bring your trappings inside. Maybe I can find you something to eat and drink. Ask him, why don't you? Uh, Allie? Hmm? Uh, me and Lori's been having an argument. About what, baby? Uh, about what you meant when you said that about driving with me to the end of the world. Oh, well... <laughs> I, uh, didn't really mean to the end of the world. Then how far did you want to go? Oh, about as far as, say, uh, Clarmore. To the hotel. What's at the hotel? In front of the hotel is a veranda. Inside is a lobby. Upstairs. Hmm. Upstairs might be paradise. I thought they was just bedrooms. For you and me, baby. Paradise. You see, I knew I was right and Laurie was wrong. You do want to marry me, don't you? <laughs> what did you say? I said, you do want to marry me, don't you? What did you say? I didn't say nothing. Oh, <laughs> Susanna. You who? Hey, no, Annie. It's me, honey. I'm back. Oh, foot. Just when. <laughs> oh, well. That's what Parker. Promise me you won't fight him. Why fight? I never saw the man before. I only fight with my friends. <laughs> hey, no, Annie. How's my honey bunch? How's the sweetest little 110 pounds of sugar in the territory? Uh, Will? Hmm? This is Allie Hackham. Oh, how are you? Hack. <laughs> it's all right. Don't mind the way I talk. It's all right. I'm going to marry her. Marry her? On purpose? Well, sure. No sitch of a thing. It's a wonderful thing to be married. Allie! I got a brother in Persia. He got six wives. Six wives? Hmm? All at once? Well, sure. That's the way they do it in them countries. Oh, not always. I got another brother in Persia. He only got one wife. He's a bachelor. Look, Will. Look, Will, nothing. Know what I got for first prize at the fair? Fifty dollars. That was good. Oh, fifty dollars? Catch on. Your pa promised I could marry you if I could ever get fifty dollars. That's right, he did. And you know what I done with it? I spent it all on presents for you. But if you spend it, then you ain't got the cash. Well, what I got's worth more than cash. Feller who sold me the stuff told me. Oh, but Will... Stop saying, but Will. When do I get a little old kiss? Oh, oh eight old Annie. Honey, you ain't been off my mind since I left. All the time at the fairgrounds, even. When I was chasing steers, I'd rope one under the hooves and pull him up sharp. He'd land on his little rump, and then I'd think of you. Don't start talking purdy, Will. <laughs> Seen a lot of beautiful gals in Kansas City. I didn't give one of them a look. Well, how could you see him if you didn't give him a look? Well, I mean I didn't look loving at him. Like I look at you. Don't look like that, Will. I can't bear it. I won't stop looking like this till you give me a little old kiss. 
What's a little old kiss? Well, nothing. Less than it comes from you. Oh, you do talk pretty. No, no, I won't! Supposing that I say that your lips are like cherries, or roses, or berries, what you gonna do? <gasps> Can't you feel my heart palpitating and bumping, waiting for something, something nice from you? I gotta get a kiss, and it's gotta be quick, or I'll jump in a crick and die. What's a girl to say when you talk that away? Yeah! <laughs> Oh, what a beautiful morning, oh, what a beautiful day, I got a beautiful feeling, everything's going my way. Curly, better take that wagon down to the troughs and give the team some water. Right away, Aunt Ella. Can I come, too? I just love to watch the way you handle horses. That's about all I can handle, I guess. Well, I can't believe that, Curly. Not after what I heard about you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Curly's took up with that Cummins girl. What do I care about that? Oh, come on, boys. Better get those hampers out under the trees where it's cool. <laughs> Why should a woman who is healthy and strong Blub her like a baby if her man goes away Weeping and a-wailing how he's done her wrong That's one thing you'll never hear me say Never gonna think that the man I lose Is the only man among men I'll snap my fingers to show I don't care I'll buy me a brand new dress to wear I'll screw up my neck and I'll brush my hair and start all over again. <laughs> Many a new face will please my eye. Many a new love will find me. Never have I once looked back to sigh over the romance behind me. Many a new day will dawn before I do. Many a light lad may kiss and fly, a kiss gone by is by gone. Never have I asked an August sky, where has last July gone? Never have I wandered through the rye, wondering where has some guy gone? Many a new day will dawn before I do. <laughs> Sad news for me. Yeah, well, he's a fine fellow. Oh, don't hide your feelings, Allie. I can't stand it. I'd rather have you come right out and say, your heart's been busted in two. Um, are you positive that you've got to marry Will? Sure shooting. And there is no chance for you to change your mind? No chance. 
All right, then, my heart is busted in two. Oh, Allie, you do make up pretty things to say. Hey, do Hey, do Annie. Oh, hello, Pa. What you been shooting? Rabbits. Is that true what I hear about Will Parker getting $50? That's right, Pa, and he wants to hold you to your promise. Too bad. Still and all, I can't go back on my word. Oh. But I advise you to get that money off of him before he loses it all. Put it in your stocking or inside your corset where he can't get at it. Or can he? But, Pa, he ain't exactly kept it. He spent it all on presents. See? What did I tell you? Now he can't have you. I said it had to be $50 cash. But, Mr. Carnes, is that fair? Who the hell are you? This is Allie Hackham. Well, you shut your face or I'll fill your behind so full of buckshot. You'll be walking around like a duck for the rest of your life. Allie, if I don't have to marry Will, maybe your heart don't have to be busted in two like you said. I did not say that. Yes, you did. No, I did not. You trying to make out my daughter to be a liar? No. I am just trying to make clear what the liar I am. If she is telling the truth, what else you been saying to my daughter? Oh, an awful lot. When? Last night in the moonlight. Where? Alongside a haystack. Hey, listen, Mr. Carr. Listen. listen, what else you been saying? He called me his Persian kitten. Why'd you call her that? I don't remember. Oh, I do. He called me his Persian kitten because they was the cats with the soft, round tails. That's enough. In this part of the country, that better be a proposal of marriage. Oh, that's what I thought. Is that what you think? Look, Mr. I'm Carnes... Looking. I'm looking. Mr. Carnes, I am no good. I'm a peddler. A peddler travels up and down and all around, and you'd hardly ever see your daughter no more. Well, that'll be all right. Take care of her, son. Take care of my little rosebud. Oh, that's pretty, Pa. Are you sure for certain you can bear to let me go? Are you sure, Mr. Carnes? You just try to change my mind and see what happens to you. <laughs> Allie, ain't it wonderful? Pa making up our minds for oh, us. Yes. <laughs> and he won't change neither. Once he gives his word that you have me, why, you got me. I know I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mrs. Allie Hackham. The peddler's bride. Wait till I tell Underneath the <laughs> <It's time. laughs> yes. Hello, Laurie. Just packing your hamper now. I've been busy. Mm, you've got gooseberry tarts. I wonder if they're as light as mine. I'd like to float away if you blew on them. Oh, well, I did blow onto one of mine, and it broke up into a million pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Carly, get her, Lori. <laughs> Carly, Gertie, you better come inside and cool off. You coming inside to me, Carly? Not just yet. Well, don't be too long. And when the auction starts tonight, don't forget that mine's the biggest hamper. <laughs> girl I heard so much talk of. Oh, you've seen her before, ain't you? Yeah, but not since she got so old. I never did see anyone get so peaked looking in such short a time. Yeah, and she says she's only 18. I bet you she's 19. So what you got in your hamper? Just some old meat pies and apple jelly. Nothing like what Gertie Cummins has in her basket. Are you really gonna drive to the box social with that Judd fella? I reckon so. Why? Nothing. Well, it's just that people seem to expect me to take you. Well, maybe it's just as well you ain't. We don't want people talking about us, do we? You really think they do talk about us? <laughs> you know how they air, like a swarm of mud wasps, always got to be buzzing about something. What are they saying, that you're stuck on me? Uh -uh. Most of the talk is that you're stuck on me. Well, I can't imagine how these ugly rumors stop. Me neither. Why do they think up stories that link my name with yours? 
Why do the neighbors gossip all day behind their doors? I have a way to prove what they say is quite untrue. Here is the gist, a practical list of don'ts for you. Don't throw bouquets at me. Don't please my folks too much. Don't laugh at my jokes too much. People will say we're in love. Who laughs at your jokes? Some people claim that you are to blame as much as I. Why do you take the trouble to bake my favorite pie? Granting your wish, I carved our initials on that tree. Just keep a slice of all the advice you give so free. Don't praise my charm too much. Don't look so vain with me. Don't stand in the rain with me. People will say we're in love. Don't take my arm too much. Don't keep your hand in mine. Your hand. Feel so grand in mind. People will say we're in love. Don't dance all night with me till the stars fade from above. They'll see it's all right with me. Now, don't you reckon you could tell that Judd Bella you'd rather go with me tonight? Curly? No, I couldn't. Oh, you couldn't? I think I'll go down here to the smokehouse where Judd's at, see what's so elegant about it makes girls want to go to parties with him. Curly? What? Nothing. Don't sigh and gaze at me. Eyes are so like mine. Your eyes mustn't glow like mine. Got your hamper, Pat? And Eller, yes, nearly. Like a hanky. What would I want with an old hanky? You got a smudge on your cheek, just under your eye.
I'll open it, can't you? Howdy. What do you want? Well, I done got through with my business up at the house and thought I'd pick off. You got a gun, I see. Good'n. Colt 45. What do you do with it? Shoot things. Oh. Well, that there pink picture, that's a naked woman, ain't it? Ah, your eyes don't lie to you. Oh, she's plumb stark naked as a jaybird. No. No, she ain't. She got a couple little thingamabobs tied onto her. Shucks, that ain't a, a thing for what I got here. Take a look at that top. Well, I'll go blind. That'd give me ideas. Dinger, that is. <laughs> yeah, that sure is a dinger. It's a good looking rope you got there, Judd. I'll bet it spins nice. You know Will Parker. He sure can spin a rope. That's a good strong hook you got there. You could hang yourself on that. I could what? Hang yourself. It'd be as easy as falling off a log. Fact is, you could use a log. Or chair. You see, right here, see? You can put this around your neck, tie that good up there first, of course, and then all you'd have to do is fall off of the log or the chair, whichever you'd rather fall off of. In five minutes or less, with any luck, well, you'd be as dead as a doornail. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, then... Folks would come to your funeral and sing sad songs. Oh. They would. You never know how many people like you till you're dead. You'd probably be uh, laid out in the parlor with uh, your best suit on, hair slicked down, and like a high starch collar. Would there be any flowers, you think? Sure. And, and palms, too, all around your coffin. Then the folks would come, the men would bare their heads, and the women would sniffle softly. Some would probably faint. The ones that took a shine to you when you was alive, that is. Well, what women ever took a shine to me? Well, lots of women. Only they don't come right out and show you how they feel less than you die first. I guess that's so. Huh? They sure would sing loud, though, when the singing start. Sing like their hearts would break. Poor Judd is dead. Poor Judd Fry is dead. All gather round his coffin now and cry. He had a heart of gold, and he wasn't very old. Why did such a feller have to die? Poor Judd is dead, poor Judd Fry is dead. He's looking all so peaceful and serene. And serene. He's all laid out to rest with his hands across his chest. His fingernails have never been so clean. Then the preacher would get up and he'd say, Folks, we are gathered here to moan and groan over our brother Judd Fry, who hung himself by a rope in the smokehouse. Then there'd be weeping and wailing from some of them women. Yes. Then he'd say, Judd Fry was the most misunderstood man in the territory. People used to think he was a mean, ugly feller. They used to call him a dirty skunk and an ornery pig stealer. But the folks that really knowed him know that beneath them two dirty shirts he always wore. There beat a heart as big as all outdoors. As big as all outdoors. Judd Fry loved his fellow man. He loved his fellow man. He loved the birds of the forest and the beasts of the field. He loved the mice and the vermin in the barn. And he treated the rats like equals, which was right. And he loved the little children. He loved everybody and everything, only he never lied on, so nobody knows it. Poor 
Judd is dead, poor Judd Fry is dead. His friends will weep and wail for miles around. Miles around. The daisies in the dell will give out a different smell. Because poor Judd is underneath the ground. Poor Judd is dead. A candle lights his head. He's laying in a coffin made of wood. Wood. And folks are feeling sad. Cause they used to treat him bad. And now they know their friend has gone for good. Good. Poor Judd is dead. A candle lights his head. He's looking oh so pretty and so nice. He looks like he's asleep. It's a shame that he won't keep. But it's summer. And we're running out of ice. Yes, sir. That's the way it'd be. That shall be an interesting funeral. I wouldn't like to miss it. Wouldn't like to miss it, huh? Well, maybe you will. Maybe you'll go first. Maybe. Let's see now. Where is it you uh, worked at before you come up here? It was... Uh, Quapa, wasn't it? Yeah, and before that over by Tulsa. Lousy they was to me, both of them. Always making out they were better, always treating me like dirt. What'd you do, get even? Well, who said anything about getting even? Ooh, no one that I recollect, it's just coming to my head. Well, if you ever come to getting even with somebody, I'd know how to do it. With that? No. No, there's safer ways than that if you use your brain. You remember that fire on the Bartlett farm over by Sweetwater? I sure do. Terrible accident about five years ago. Burned the father, mother, and daughter. Yeah, well, that there weren't no accident. The fella told me the hired hand was stuck on the Bartlett girl, and he found her in the hayloft with another fella. Then it was him to burn the place? Took him weeks to get up all the kerosene, bind it up at different times. <laughs> the fellow who told me made out like it happened in Missouri, but I knowed all along it was the Bartlett farm. <laughs> what a liar he was. And kind of a murderer too, wasn't he? Get a little air in here. Now, you ain't told me yet what business you have here. Now, we ain't got no cattle to sell you, nor no cow ponies, and, and the oak crops done spoke for. You sure did relieve my mind considerable. There can only be one other thing you want on this farm, and it better not be that. But that's just what it is. Better not be. You stay away from her, you hear? You know, somebody ought to tell Lori what sort of a man you are. For that matter, somebody ought to tell you once about yourself. You better get out of here, Curly. You know, a fellow wouldn't feel safe in here alone with you if, if he didn't know you, but... <laughs> I know you, John. In this country, there's two things you can do if you're a man. Live out of doors is one. Live in a hole is the other. I've sat by my horse in the brush somewhere many a time and heard a rattlesnake rattling. See, he's scared to death because someone's coming close to his hole. 
Somebody's gonna step on him. So he gets his old fangs ready and full of poison and curls up and waits. As long as you live in a hole, you gotta have protection. Well, you can have muscles like iron and still be as weak as an empty bladder less than you got something to barb your hide with. How did you get to be the way you were anyway? Setting in this filthy hole thinking the way you're thinking. Why don't you do something healthy once in a while instead of staying in there? Shut up. Crawling and fist. <laughs> You ought to feel better now. Awfully hard on the roof, though. I wished you'd let me show you something. There's a knot hole over there about the size of a dime. You see it a-winking? I just want to see if I can hit it. <laughs> Clean through. Slick has a whistle. I know what I could do it, you saw it too. Somebody's coming, I expect. Who fired off a shot? Was that you, Curly? Well, don't stand there, you let me answer when you spoke to. I shot once. What was you shooting at? See that knot hole over there? I see lots of knot holes. Well, it was one of them. Well, ain't you a pair of purty nothings a picking away at knot holes and scaring everybody to death? I ought to give you a good Dutch rub and iron some of the craziness out of you. It's all right. Nobody's hurt. Just a pair of fools swapping noises. Mind if I visit with you, gents? It's good to get away from the women for a while. Now then, we're all by ourselves. I got a few purties for to show you. Private knick-knacks special for the men folks. I'll see you gentlemen later. I gotta go get a Surrey I hired for tonight. Our postcards! Who do you think you're taking in that Surrey? Aunt Taylor and Laurie, if she'll come. She won't. Maybe she will. Uh, she promised to go with me and she better not change her mind. She better not! Now then, I want to show you these straight from Paris. Hmm? I don't want none of them things now. Got, you got any frog stickers? You mean one of them long knives? <laughs> what would you want with a thing like that? I don't know. Kill a hog or a skunk. It's all the same, ain't it? Nah. I'll tell you what I'd like better than a frog sticker if you got one. You ever heard of one of them things they call the little wonder? It's a thing you hold up to your eye to see pictures. Only that ain't all there is to it. Not quite. See, it's got a jigger on to it. And you touch it, and down springs a sharp blade. On a spring, eh? Yeah, well, you, you say to a fella, look through this. And then when he's looking, you snap the blade out. It's just above his chest. And then bang, <laughs> down you come. <laughs> Good joke to play on a friend. I, uh, I don't like to carry things like that. Too dangerous. What I'd like to show you, though, is my new stock of postcards. Sick of them things. Now, I'm gonna get me a real woman. What would you want with a real woman? Why, I'm having trouble right now, all on account of a woman. They always make trouble. And you say you want one? Why? Look at you. You're a man. What is free to come and go as you please. You got a nice, cozy little place here. Private. Nobody to bother you. Artistic pictures. They don't talk back to you like a woman does, hmm? I'm tired of all these pictures of women. All right. So you're tired of them. You throw them away and buy some new ones. If you get tired of a woman, what can you do? Nothing. Just keep getting tireder and tireder. I've made up my mind. So, you want a real woman, huh? Say, have you heard of a girl named Edo Ani? 
I don't want her. I don't want her either. But I got her. I don't want nothing from no peddler man. I want real things! <laughs> doing. Shut up in here like that fella says, a, a crawling and a festering. What am I doing in this lousy smokehouse? The floor creaks, the door squeaks. There's a field mouse a nibbling on a broom. And I sit by myself like a cobweb on the shelf by myself in a lonely room. But when there's a moon in my window and it slants down a beam across my bed and the shatter of a tree starts a dancing on the wall and a dream starts dancing in my head And all of the things that I wish for Turn out like I want them to be And I'm better than that smart Alec Cowhand Who thinks he is better than me And the girl that I want Ain't afraid of my arms And her own soft arms keep me warm and her long yellow hair falls across my face Just like the rain in a storm The floor creaks, the door squeaks and the mouse starts a nibbling on the broom. And the sun flicks my eyes. It was all a pack of lies. I'm awake in a lonely room. I ain't going to dream about her arms no more. I ain't going to leave her alone. Going outside to get myself a bride. Get me a woman to call my own.
Wake up, Miss Laurie. Time to start for the party.
farmer and the cowman should be friends. Oh, the farmer and the cowman should be friends. One man likes to push a plow, the other likes to chase a cow. Has no reason why they can't be friends. Territory folks should stick together, territory folks should all be pals. Cowboys dance with the farmer's daughters, farmers dance with the ranchers' cows. Territory folks should stick together, territory folks should all be pals. Cowboys dance with the farmer's daughters, farmers dance with the ranchers' cows. I'd like to say a word for the farmer. He come out west and made a lot of changes. He come out west and built a lot of fences. And built them right across our cattle ranges. Like, you can't even ride oh, those dirt scratches. Go back to Missouri where you came from. We got just as much rock to be here. Gentlemen, yeah, we shot up. The farmer is a good and thrifty citizen. No matter what the cowman says or thinks, you seldom see him drinking in a bar room. Unless somebody else is buying drinks. But the farmer and the cowman should be friends. Oh, the farmer and the cowman should be friends. The cowman rests a cow with these. Farmer steals their butter and cheese. Has no reason why they can't be friends. I'd like to say a word for the cowboy. The road he treads is difficult and stony. He rides for days on end with just a pony for a friend. I sure am feeling sorry for the pony. <laughs> The farmer should be sociable with the cowboy If he rides by and asks for food and water Don't treat him like a louse Make him welcome in your house But be sure that you lock up your wife and daughter Oh, Andrea Who wanted an old farm woman anyhow? Notice you're married once a year to get a square meal Hey, you can talk about our women folk that away He that's can right. say what he wants That's right, you sound like him Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go Ain't anybody gonna slug out anything. This here's a party. Now sing it, Andrew. Tum to the yum tum tum. The farmer and the cowman should be friends. Oh, the sing. farmer Shake and the cowman should be friends. One man likes to push a plow, the other likes to chase a cow. That's the reason why they can't be friends. And when this territory is a state and joins the union just like all the others, the farmer and the cowman and the merchant must all behave themselves and act like brothers. I'd like to teach you all a little saying and learn these words by heart the way you should. I don't say I'm no better than anybody else. But I'd be damned if I ain't just as good. I don't say I'm no better than anybody else. But I'll be damned if I ain't just as good. Tell folks should stick together. Tell them folks should all be pals. Cowboys dance to the farmer's daughters. Farmers dance to the ranchers' cows.
certain kind of way with a certain color ribbon. But <laughs> well, that ain't my fault. <laughs> now, we'll auction all the hampers on the other side of the house and work around back here. Follow me! Hey, hello, young fellow. Oh, it's you. I was just hoping to meet up with you. It seems like you and me ought to have a little talk, huh? We only got one thing to talk about. Well, Mr. Hackam, I hear you got yourself engaged to Ado Annie. Uh, well... Well, nothing. I don't know what to call you. You ain't pretty enough for a skunk. You ain't skinny enough for a snake. You're too little to be a man, too big to be a mouse. I reckon you're a rat. That's logical. Answer me one question. Do you really love her? Well... Because well, if that's... I thought that you didn't, I'd tie you up in this bag and drop you in the river. Are you serious about her? Yes, I'm serious. And do you worship the ground that she walks on like I do? And hack them? This is one answer that better be yes. Yes, yes, yes. The hell you do. Yes. And what'd you spend ever since you had in the world for her? What I've done. See, that bag, it's full of presents. It cost me 50 bucks all I had in the world. Well, if you had that $50 cash... Well, I'd have eight old Annie and you'd lose her. Yes. Loser. Hey, let's see what you got in that bag. Might want to buy something. What would you want with them? I'm a peddler, ain't I? I buy and sell. Might pay you real money. Maybe even as much as, well, a lot. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. What a beautiful hot water bag. It looks French. Must have cost plenty. I'll uh, give you $8 for it. $8? That wouldn't be honest. I only paid three fifty for it. All right, I said I'd give you eight, and I will. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, say, that is a cracker jack. Huh? Take your hands off that. That was for our wedding night. It don't fit you so good. I give you twenty-two dollars for but it. But that's not All what I All right, twenty-two fifty, and not a cent more. Oh, say, what a beautiful... Um, Ankle brace. Oh, um, them was for her to wear. I didn't hardly think that was for you. It's mighty dainty. Uh, Fifteen dollars. So let's see. Eight and twenty-two makes thirty. And fifteen is forty-five. And fifty cents makes forty-five fifty. Forty-five fifty? Yeah. Say, that's almost... You want to buy some more? I might. Did you ever see one of these things? Uh, where did you get the thing like this? You got it in for somebody? Well, how do you mean? It's just funny pictures. <laughs> that all you think it is? It's more than that. It's a kind Where's of... Where's everybody? Where's Ann Eller? Well, on to the other side of the house, Laurie. Laurie, where did you run to? How much you give me for this thing? Yeah, I, uh, I don't like to handle things like this. I guess you don't know what it really is, huh? Well, I sure do. It's just a gal wearing pink tights. <laughs> Either you two seen Laurie? Um, just went to the other side of the house, Judd. Auction's going on there. Let me take a look at that. How much you want for it? Three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, that's a lot of money, but I got an idea it might be worth it. That's four. Now, let's see. Three fifty from him and forty-five fifty from you. That makes fifty dollars, don't it? No, one dollar short. Dang it! I must have figured wrong. 
How much for the rest of the stuff in the bag? One dollar? Done! <laughs> <laughs> now I got fifty dollars. <laughs> Ain't I? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> you know what this means? Hmm. It means I'm gonna take Ado Annie back from you. You wouldn't do a thing like that to me. Oh, wouldn't I? And when I tell her pa who I got most of the money off of, maybe he'll change his mind about who's smart and who's dumb. <laughs> Well, say, young fella, you certainly bunkoed me. Now, here's the last two hampers. Who's heir? I ain't got no idea. Well, this one's mine, and the other one's Lori's. Oh. Well, that's the end of that secret. <laughs> Well, then, what am I bid for Edo Annie's hamper? Uh, two bits. Four. Who says six? You slim? Well, ain't anybody hungry anymore? How about you, peddler man? Six bits? Uh, no. Come on. Uh, six bits. Now, six bits ain't enough for a lunch like Edo Annie can make. Let's hear a dollar. How about you, Mike? You won her last year. That's right. Hey, Ada Wanna, you still got that same sweet potato pie like last year? You bet. Uh -huh. How about it, Mike? Same old sweet potato pie. What do you say? Well, I say it give me a three-day bellyache. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, man. Who bids a dollar? Bid. Mine's the last bid. I got it for six bids. Bid a dollar. Uh, uh, Ninety cents. Ninety cents? We're getting rich. Another desk for the schoolhouse. Do I hear more? You hear fifty dollars. Hey! Fifty dollars? Yep. Nobody ever bid fifty dollars for a lunch. Nobody ever bid ten. He ain't even got fifty dollars. Oh, yes, I have. And if you're a man of your honor, you gotta say Ado Annie belongs to me like you said she would. Where's your money? Right here in my hand. That ain't yours. You just bid it, didn't you? You just give it to the schoolhouse. <laughs> Gotta say the peddler man here still gets my daughter's hand. Now, wait a minute. That ain't fair. Going for $50. Going, going. $51. You crazy. <laughs> Fifth. Now, wait a minute. If I don't bid anymore, I can keep my money, can I? Sure can. Well, then I still got $50. This right. is mine. <laughs> you feeble-minded shot poke. Going, going, gone for $51. And that means Ado Annie will get the prize, I guess. And I get Ado Annie. <laughs> and what do you get for your $51? A three-day bellyache. <laughs> now, here's my niece's hamper. I took a peek inside a while ago, and I must say it looks mighty tasty. What do I hear, gents? Uh, two bits. Oh, four bits. Oh. What do you say, Slim? Six? I bid one dollar. Uh, one dollar. Do I hear two? Dollar and quarter. Two dollars. Two fifty. Three dollars. And two bits. Three dollars. Four bits. Four dollars. And two bits. Four and a quarter. Ain't I gonna hear any more? I got a bit of four and a quarter from Judd Fry. You gonna let him have it? Four and a half. Oh, four, four and a half. half. Going for four and four a half. Four seventy-five. Four seventy-five. Come on, gentlemen. Schoolhouse ain't built yet. Got to get us a nice chimney. Five dollars. Yeah. 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 And two bits. Too rich for my blood. Can't afford no more. Oh, five and a quarter. Ain't got nearly enough yet. Enough for cold duck with stuffing. And that lemon meringue pie. Six dollars! <laughs> and two bits. My, you're stubborn, Judd. Mr. Cards is a richer man than you. And I, I know he loves custard with raspberry syrup. Do I hear any more? No. They all dropped out, can't you see? You got enough, fella. Let's get on. Yeah, here's your money. Hold on, you. I ain't said going, going, gone yet. Well, say it. Going to Judd Fry for six dollars and two bits. Going. Going. Who'd you say was getting, Lori? Judd Fry. And for how much? Six and a quarter. Well, I don't figure that's quite enough to you. 
more than you got. I got a saddle here. Cost me thirty dollars. Well, you can't bid saddle. It's got to be cash. Thirty dollar saddle must be worth something to somebody. I'll give you ten. Don't be a fool, boy. You can't earn a living without a saddle. You got cash? Right in my pocket. Don't let's waste time. How high you going? Higher than you, no matter what. And Eller, I'm bidding all this ten dollars. Tom, just give me. Ten dollars going for ten dollars going. Ten dollars Go and two bits. Curly. Most of you boys know my horse Dunn. He's a kind of nice horse, gentle and well broke. Don't sell Dunn, Curly. It ain't worth it. I'll give you twenty-five dollars for it. I'll sell Dunn to you. That makes the bid uh, thirty-five dollars, Anna. Curly, you're crazy. <laughs> Uh, but, but it's all for the school now, saying it. All for yeah. education and That's learning. Right, going for thirty-five dollars. Going, going. Hold on, hold on. I ain't through bidding yet. Well, you just put up everything you got in the world, didn't you? you? Can't bid the clothes on your back because they ain't worth nothing. And you can't bid your gun because you need that. Yeah, see, you need that bad. So. And Eller, I'm just as reckless as Curly McLean, I guess. Just as good at, at getting what I want. I'm going to put up everything I got in the world. All to save for two years doing farm work. All for Lori. Here it is. $42.31. Anybody... Want to buy a gun? You, Joe. I bought a brand new last Thanksgiving. It's worth a lot. Curly, please don't sell your gun. Give you $18 for it. Sold. That makes the bid 53, Ad Miller. Anybody going any higher? Going, going, gone. Well, what's the matter with you folks? Ain't anybody going to cheer or nothing? I don't want to hear you. Good Good you. Good Good that's the idea. Farmer and the cowman should be friends. You lost the bidding, but the bidding was fair. Come on, cowman. Shake the farmer's hand. Sure. I'll shake your hand. No hard feelings, Curly? That's better. Curly, I, I want to show you something. Oh, excuse us, Lori. You ever, you ever seen one of them things? Well, what is that? Well, it's something special. See, you, will you hold it up to your eye like this? <laughs> Take a look. No. Oh. Curly, what you doing? Doing? Oh, nothing much. Well, what do you want to squeal at a man like that for? You scare the liver and lights out of a fella. Well, stop looking at them old French pictures and ask me for a dance. You brung me to the party, didn't you? All right, then, you crazy old woman. I'll dance with you. Dance all over the meadow if you want. Pick that banjo to pieces, Sam. I got the $50 cash, now you name the day. August 15th. Well, why August 15th? Uh, cause that was the first day I was kissed. Was it? I, I didn't remember that. You wasn't there. Oh! Now look at here! We gotta have us a serious talk. Now that you're engaged to me, you gotta stop having fun. I'm I mean with other fellers. You'll have to be a little more standoffish when fellers offer you a buggy ride. I'll give an imitation of a crawfish and dig myself a hole where I can hide. I heard how you was kicking up some capers when I was off in Kansas City, Mo. I heard some things you couldn't print in papers from fellers who've been talking like they know. Foot! 
To you I was as faithful as can be for me. Them stories about the way I lost my bloomers. Yeah! Rumors, a lot of tempest in a pot of tea. The whole thing don't sound very good to me. Well, you see. I go and sow my last wild oat, I cut out all shenanigans. I save my money, don't gamble a drink in the back room down at Flanagan's. I give up lots of other things that a gentleman never mentions. But before I give up any more, I want to know your intentions. With me, it's all or nothing. Is it all or nothing with you? It can't be in between, it can't be now and then, no half and half romance will do. I'm a one woman man, home loving type, all complete with slippers and pipe. Take me like I am or leave me be. If you can't give me all, give me nothing, and nothing's what you'll get from me. Not even some. Uh uh, nothing's what you'll get. From me. It's more like it. It can't be in between. Uh -uh. It can't be now and then. No half and half romance will do. Would you build me a house all painted white, cute and clean and pretty and bright? Big enough for two, but not for three. Supposing that we should have a third one. He better look a lot like me. Image. He better look a lot like me. to you. What made you slap that whip on the old lady and nearly make her run away? What was your hurry? Afraid we'd be late for the party. You didn't want to be left alone with me. Not a minute more than you had to, did you? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm alone with you by myself now, ain't I? Well, you wouldn't have been if, if you could have got out of it. Mornings, you stay hid in your room all the time, and, and nights, you, you sit in the front room and won't get out of Aunt Eller's sight. Last time I seen you alone was the winter, and the snow was six feet deep in drifts, and, and I was sick. You brought that hot soup out to the smokehouse, and, and you give it to me, and, and me in bed. I hadn't shaved in two days, and you asked me if I had a fever. And you put your hand on my head to see. I remember. Do you? I, I bet you don't remember as much as me. I remember everything you've ever done. 
every word you've ever said. <laughs> I, I can't think of nothing else. Let's see. We, you see how it is. I ain't good enough for you, am I? I'm just a hired hand. I got dirt on my hands. Pink slop! I ain't fitting to touch you. You better? You so much better? Well, we'll see who's better, Miss Laurie. We'll see who's better, and then, then maybe you won't be so free with your airs. You're such a fine lady. Are you making threats to me? Are you standing there trying to tell me if I don't allow you to slobber over me like a hog while you're going to do something about it? You're nothing but a mangy dog, and somebody ought to shoot you. You think so much about being a hired hand. Well, I'll just tell you something that'll rest your brain, Mr. Judd. You ain't a hired hand for me no more. You can just pack up your duds and scoot. Oh, I got better ideas than that. You ain't to come on the place again, you hear me? I'll send your stuff any place you say, but you so much as set foot inside the pasture gate, and I'll stick the dogs onto you. You said you say. You brought it on yourself. I can't help it. I can't never rest. I told you the way it was. And you wouldn't listen! Ado! <laughs> it's me, Laurie. Have you seen Ada Lanny? She's gone again. Will, Will, could you do something for me? Go and find Curly and tell him I'm here. I want to see Curly awful bad. I gotta see him. Well, then why don't you turn around and look, you crazy woman? Oh, Curly. Well, you found yours. I gotta go hunt for mine. Now, what on earth is ailing the Belle of Claremore? My gum, if you ain't crying. Curly, I'm afraid, afraid of my life. Jump from toadstools. Oh, great Lord. Oh, don't you leave me. Oh, great God Almighty. Don't mind me a crying, I can't help it. <laughs> you cry your eyes out. I don't know what to do. I'll show you. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Woo about all a man can stand in public. You go away from me, you. You don't like me. Like you? Oh my God, get away from me. I tell you, plumb away from me. <laughs> Lori, look, you stand right where you are, and uh, I'll uh, sit right here. And just tell me what you wanted with me. Well, Judd was here. He scared me. He's crazy. I never saw nobody like it. He talked wild, and he threatened me, so I fired him. I wish I hadn't, and now there ain't no telling what he'll do now. You fired him? Well, <laughs> then that's all there is to it. I'll get you a new hard hand tomorrow. Look, I'll stay on the place tonight if you're nervous about that hound dog. So quit you worrying about it, or I'll spank you. <laughs> hey, <laughs> while I'm thinking about it, how about you know, marrying me? Gracious, what do I want to marry you for? Oh, couldn't you think of some reason why you might? Mm, I can't think of none right now, hardly. Lori? Please, man. Marry me. I don't know what I'm going to do if you don't. Curly, why I'll marry you if you want me to. I'll be the happiest man alive as soon as we're married. I gotta learn to be a farmer. I see that now. Quit thinking about the throwing of the rope and start to get my hands blistered in a new way. 
Things is changing right and left. Buy up mowing machines. Cut down the prairie. Shoot your horses. Break the plow under the sod. They're gonna make a state out of this territory. They're gonna put it in the Union. The country's changing. We gotta change with it. Bring up a pair of boys. <laughs> New stock to keep things going the way they are in this crazy country. But now, I got you to help me. I'll mount to something yet. I remember the first time I ever saw you. It was at the fair, and you was riding that, that gray filly of blue stars. And I says to someone, who is that skinny little kid with the bang hanging down on her forehead? I remember you was riding Bronx that day. That's right. And one of them throwed you. That did not throw me. I guess you jumped off. Sure, then. I jumped off. Oh, you sure did. Hey, if there's anybody in this yard that can hear my voice, I'd like for you to know that Lori Williams is my girl. And she went out and got me to ask her to marry me. Now you're on the way to Katusi. Well, let them. <laughs> let people say we're in love. Who cares what happens now? Just keep your hand in mine. Your hand feels so grand. People say we're in love. Starlight looks well on us. Let the stars beam from above. Who cares if they tell? Say goodbye here, baby. Oh, can't you even stay to drink to Curly and Laurie? Time for the lonely gypsy to go back to the open road. Wished I was going. And then you wouldn't be lonely. Hey, look, Edoani, there is a man I know who loves you like nothing ever loved nobody. Yes, Ally Hackam. A man who will stick to you all your life. And that's the man for you. Will Parker. Hmm? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I like Will a lot. He's a fine fellow. Strong like an ox. Young and handsome. Well, I love him all right, I guess. Of course you do. And you love those clear blue eyes of his. And the way his mouth wrinkles up when he smiles. Huh? Do you love him too? I love him. Because... He will make my Edo Annie happy. Goodbye, my baby. I will show you how we say goodbye in Persia. Hmm? Oh. Mm -hmm. Of the family. I show you how we say goodbye in my country. <laughs> Persian goodbye. You're a lucky fellow. I wish it was me she was marrying instead of you. Well, it don't seem to make no difference, hardly. <laughs> well, time for the lonely, lonely gypsy to go back to the open road. One goodbye. Ba ba bee, ba 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 bee, ba ba bee, ba 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 boo, ba 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 bee, ba 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 You ain't gonna think of that old peddler anymore, are ya? Course not. Never think of no one less than he's with me. Then I'll never leave your side. Even if you don't, 
Even if you never go away on a trip or nothing, paint you once in a while, give me one of them Persian goodbyes. Persian goodbye? Well, that ain't nothing compared to an Oklahoma hello. Come on, get back there. Woo! Hello, Will! Yeah! Well, Andrew, why ain't you behind the bar and getting drunk with the rest of us? Never seen you <laughs> stay so sober at a wedding party before. I've been scared all night. Scared Judd Fried come up and start for Curly. Judd Fry's been out of the territory for three weeks. Now he's back. I seen him last night at Claremore, drunk as a lord. Yeah. Yeah. All right, are you guys ready? Come on now. Yeah. Who's gonna get it? Yeah. Oh. Let's have three cheers for the happy couple. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> That's it, Curly. Was you scared when that preacher man said that part about, do you take this here woman? I was scared he wouldn't say it. <laughs> I was afraid Curly back out on me. They couldn't pick a better time to start in life. It ain't too early and it ain't too late. Starting as a farmer with a brand new wife. Soon be living in a brand new state. <laughs> brand new state. <laughs> Gonna teach him great. Gonna give you barley, carrots and potatoes, pasture for your cattle, spinach and tomatoes, flowers on the prairie where the June bugs zoom, plenty of air and plenty of room, plenty of room to swing a rope, plenty of heart and plenty of hope. Walk Oklahoma where the wind comes sweeping down the plain. And the waving wheat can sure smell sweet when the wind comes right behind the rain. Oh, la home every night, my honey lamb and I sit alone and talk and watch a hawk making lazy circles in the sky. We know we belong to the land, and the land we belong to is grand. And when we say, yeah, honey, fire, we we're only saying you're doing fine, Oklahoma, Oklahoma, okay.
dress. We gotta get going in a minute. You better hurry and get in your own dogs. They're laying all over my room. <laughs> will, would you hitch the team to the Surrey farm? Sure will. Have it up in a jiffy. Okay. He's gone upstairs. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now, it's just a good old-fashioned custom. It never hurt nobody. Now, you women just stay out of the way. Bamboos. Well, it ain't gonna be rough, is it? Just hush now. Quit gabbing about it. Come on, boys. Let's go. You know, seems like there's times when men ain't got no use for women. Well, there's times when women ain't got no use for men. Yeah, but who wants to be dead? <laughs> Gertie. Bushy Just come from there. <laughs> Too bad you missed Laurie's wedding. Been having one of my own. Lance, who'd you marry? Where is he? Is that him? That's him! <laughs> Allie Hacker? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Edo Annie. How long have you been married? Four days. <laughs> Four days with a laugh like that should count like a golden wedding. You must have wanted to. Sure I wanted to. I wanted to marry her when I saw the moonlight shining off the barrel of her father's shotgun. I thought it would be better to be alive. <laughs> now I ain't so sure. Allie ain't gonna be traveling around the country no more. I decided you ought to settle down in Bushy Head and run Papa's store. Hey, Will, did you hear the news? <laughs> Gertie married the peddler. Well, mighty glad to hear that, peddler man. Mighty glad to hear it. I'm... I think I ought to kiss the bride. Oh, a friend of the family, remember? <gasps> hey, Gertie, have you ever had an Oklahoma hello? <laughs> well, hello, Gertie. Come on, get back there, little heifer. <laughs> 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 from killing your wife. Mind your own business. What's <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> 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 doing down there making all that racket, you bunch of pig stealers? <laughs> you two, you curly-headed cowboy. With the dimple on your chin. Let's bring oh, down. Hey, Laura, I got a girl, baby. Go girl. Right <laughs> still going on? Glad I ain't too late. I got a present for the groom. First, I want to kiss the bride. Maybe it's better for you and Curly not to go away tonight. I don't know why that had to happen when everything's so fine. Don't let your mind run on it. I can't forget it. I tell you, I never will. Well, that's all right, Laura, baby. If you can't forget, just don't try to, huh? Oh, lots of things can happen to folks. Sickness or... Or being born hungry, even. Or being old and feared to die. That's the way it is. Cradle to grave. But you can stand it. There's one way. You gotta be hearty. You gotta be. You can't deserve the, the sweet and tender in life. Lessen your toughness. Wish I was the way you are. <laughs> Fiddle. Old and scrawny, you couldn't hire me to be the way that I am. What am I going to do without you? You're such a crazy, sure as you're born. 
Scurry. They're taking Judd over to Dave Tyler still morning. Is he alive? Laurie Cordy, I'm here. He's the Edward Marshall. He thinks I ought to give myself up tonight. He thinks. Tonight? Will you try and leave Claremore in 20 minutes? Best thing is for Curly to go of his own accord. Tell the judge. Why, you're the judge, ain't you, Andrew? Well, yes, well, but... Well, tell him now and get it over with. It wouldn't be proper. You have to do it in court. Oh, fiddlesticks. Let's do it and say we did it in court. You can't do that. That's breaking the law. Well, let's not break the law. Let's just bend it a little. <laughs> Come on, Andrew, start the trial. We ain't got but a few minutes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Andrew, I got to protest. Oh, why don't you just shut your trap? We can give the boy a fair trial without locking him up on his wedding night. Now... Now, here's the long and short of it. But first, I've got to ask you, what's your plea? Well, that means why'd you do it? Why'd I do it? Because he's been pestering Lori and I always now, said... Now, just a minute. I... Just a minute. Don't let your tongue wobble around in your mouth like that. Listen to the question. Now, what happened tonight that made you kill him? He come at me with a knife. And you had to defend yourself, didn't you? Well, yes, and furthermore... Oh, never mind the furthermores. The plea is self-defense. That's right. Okay, sure. Well, 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 quiet! Did anybody see what happened? Sure, Judge, come well, we on. Oh, sorry. Like you you saw I feel funny over. about this. I feel funny. You'll feel funny when I tell your wife you're carrying on with another woman, won't you? What? Now, I ain't carrying on with no one. Maybe not. But you sure feel funny when I tell your wife, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, laugh all your life. But as federal marshal, I oh, gotta do it. shut up about being a marshal. We ain't gonna let you take the boy off to jail on his wedding night. We just ain't gonna do it. So shut up. Hey, come on, fellas. Let's pull them off to their train in Curly Surrey. And we'll be the horses. Now, hold it. I ain't even told the verdict. Well, the verdict's not guilty, ain't it? Well, of course. Then but... say it. Not guilty! <laughs> Court's adjourned. <laughs> Why, Edo, Annie, where on earth have you been? Me and Will had a misunderstanding. But he explained it fine. Hey, bride and groom, you ready? I got a beautiful feeling.